everyone and welcome to the retro channel and welcome to part two of my septandy journey uh so if you haven't seen part one i will put a link up there uh basically we looked at a pretty stock coco one and added s video and composite output to it because these things only came with an rf output um so yeah, if you haven't seen that be sure to check that out because it does sort of lead into what we're going to look at in this video which is this more heavily modified Coco One, which uh, this is how I got it. So we're gonna have a look at what's going on inside because there are some obvious uh, modifications that have been done just from looking at the outside of it. Um, whether or not this will also get the, the S-Video mod that I did, I, I don't know, it depends what's going on. Um, I will say there has been some interest in the S-Video mod. Um, for instance, whether it'll work on other Coco machines like NTSC ones or, or different models. Um, at this point, I don't know. Um, and like I said, I'm not, circuit design is not my strong suit. I, um, I'm much better at following something that somebody else has already drawn up. So basically you just trace. Something like that. So let's have a closer look. First up, the obvious point of difference is the keyboard. Um, yeah, the, the original Coco ones came with the chiclet style keyboard and this one has been upgraded to a full travel keyboard, which looks to be a bit sticky. Um, obviously this whole machine needs a good clean, um, but this is the HDL57 keyboard, I believe. Um, so it's a full travel keyboard um, and it does also include some function keys um, which the original keyboard doesn't include. Um, I think these are sort of programmable function keys. Um, so you do sort of have to code the, um, whatever program you're using to, to recognize these function keys, as far as I'm aware. Um, a lot of us doing Septandy this year um, don't have much experience with any of the Tandy computers, dare I say, um, and I'm definitely in that camp. So. Um, even though I managed to get this video out of it, um, that was through a lot of trial and error and me not writing down results as I went. Um, anyway, the other modifications that are obvious uh, is there is a power LED here. Well, what I assume is a power LED. And uh, we also have the three switches underneath. Um, no idea what they're gonna do. And around the back, there is a cable with a couple of RCA jacks hanging out. So this could be, could be a mono and color video output. It could be audio and composite video output. I, like I said, I don't know. And this will be the first time that I've opened this up. Uh, I don't even know if this thing actually works. So um, I guess we'll find that out too. I think this hole that was cut out here possibly had this in it at some point yeah it's uh it's been well used we should say so um before i plug it in let's open it up for the first time and um just have a peek at what's going on and if it looks safe we'll we'll plug it in and see if it works i guess all right let's take a look And straight away, I can see quite a few of the screws are not present. There's, there's one here, so we can take that out. And one back here, no. Is there only one screw holding this together? Oh, there's one more. So there are normally, I think, seven screws holding these things together. So far I've found two, and it feels like that is all that was holding this together. So, um, yeah. Now I'm going to take it that the, yeah, okay. So the LED is soldered onto the expansion port. So, um. Uh, I don't really want to have the case just sort of floating around. Maybe we can just 
Put it off to the side here. Um, what have we got? Obviously, this is different. Um, and that's what's going off to the switches. There is a little note that somebody has written themselves, black, red, yellow, blue, which would refer to the, um, the colors, the Y colors coming out of the power supply. Um, and over here, so there is some stuff coming off the RF modulator and also off this board and it looks like this could be ground or it could be 5 volts or 12 volts, I'm not sure, but it's probably ground, I guess. Um, so it looks like this this purple wire, purple wire, which is attached to the, the little clip, is for audio. Green, actually green must be ground because this is just clipped onto the, the RF modulator. So we've got green for ground. So yeah, maybe the gray wire is, I guess, five volts maybe. And blue is going to be some kind of video signal that's being generated here. So um, still, to me, this doesn't mean that much. Um, to some other people, they may already recognize what's going on. But um, everything else looks okay. I don't see any major issues with the power supply section, there is there is something around the bottom of the caps, but I think it's it's just glue because the caps are just glued to the board to stop them stop any vibrations. Um, but beyond that, everything looks okay. Um, oh, the other thing I can see is. This is one of the later revision boards, so it's got six, an option for 16 or 64K of RAM, and the jumpers are all set to 64K. Obviously they ran out of jumpers because they've just put a little bodge wire on that one. Um, and yeah, all the RAM chips are 4164s, which are 64K by one bit RAM chips. Um, and that's something that I didn't show in the last video. I did actually upgrade the RAM in the other Coco one. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward, especially with the, the 16 and 64K boards. You just set the jumpers, put in 4164 RAMs, and you stimp off the, the row of capacitors just below the RAM chips. So you can see there's a couple of rows of capacitors and the the one closest to the RAM chips have all been snipped off. I um, I only snipped one leg on the other board just to take those capacitors out of circuit. I believe it's um, because the, the original RAM chips, which were 4114s, I want to say, uh, that could be wrong, um, use uh, 12 volts, um, which the 4164s don't. So... Snipping out those capacitors, I think, just disables the 12 volts going to the RAM chip. And I could be completely wrong on that, but um, like I said, no expert on these. Um, let's power it on and just see what happens, see if any smoke comes out, I guess. All right. I think that's off. Here we go, plugging it in. Nothing much happening. No smoke or flames, that's always nice. No weird noises either. Cool, I guess we'll hook it up to a display and see if it gives us an output. All right, I've just hooked this up to the TV. I'm not sure which way around the video and audio is gonna be out of this thing, but let's just see. All right, no signal on the TV. I'll just swap these over. Here we go. Ugh. Oh dear lord. Uh, so we've got extended color basic version 1.0 and 
I'm sure the camera is going to pick this up. The colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It probably looks even worse than what you're seeing uh, on the video. Um, it's all messed up, but that could be to do with all this stuff going on here. So, um, what the hell? Let's, let's flick a switch and see if it does anything. Hopefully, I won't kill it by doing it while it's on. All right, well, that... Oh. Just is making a mess. Oh, um, that's a good point. The um, the text is all in lowercase, so there must be a lowercase mod because on the Coco ones and I think the Coco twos, there's no lowercase as a default option. There's there's uppercase and then there's inverted uppercase to signify lowercase, which is not helpful. Ah, okay. So the middle switch controls our upper and lower case. That's pretty cool. Um, question is, does that mean everything is just forced into... I think it just forces everything into the upper or lower case. I can't find an in-between and you probably can't see a lot of what I'm doing because the video quality is that bad. Right, so switch at the front is doing something but I don't know what it's supposed to do. Middle switch switches between upper and lower case and the final switch think is also trying to change video modes but it changes the font I think yeah okay it changes the font and it's probably again it's probably really hard to see but I can see the S's in like Microsoft change to a different font style and also up the top extended basic 1.0 the zero changes to a different font style so there's the two switches further back are switching between different character fonts and upper and lower case. And the thing at the front is trying to do something, but it's doing a terrible job, much like the video output itself. Um, I'll just try powering it off. I'll power it back on. Okay, yep, that's terrible. And flicking that first switch and powering it back on probably just made it even worse. Um, so, like I said, no expert here. So um, I'll do a little bit of research and we'll take a closer look and see if we can work out exactly how this is all supposed to work. Okay, so I also tried it out on the CRT and the image looks just as terrible or well, looks slightly better because the CRT softens it a little bit. It, it definitely doesn't look right. So I think there is an issue here. So let's just remove some of this stuff and see if we can work out what's gone wrong. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just desolder this power LED. just so I can get the top case out of the way. Right, that's a little bit better. Uh, I'll just put this back on for now. That is a massive blob of solder. Keep that back on. Um, let's have a look at what is going on inside here, which is just wrapped up with electrical tape.
Okay. So there is there is a little a pot here to adjust something. It does appear to be on the video side of things, so could be similar to to the S video mod. Maybe this needs adjusting in order to um to tame that that chroma output. I'm not sure. There is a 4.7 microfarad 50 volt cap here and a few, what are they? 549, I think they're, I think they're NPN transistors. And the other one is unknown. There's, doesn't seem to be, oh, there's markings on top. Um, 559, so could be a, PNP. Anyway, a few resistors, the cap, there is another one here. And the board itself, some of the writing is, is missing here, but it looks like it says V1-GAF maybe. Anyway, Everything sort of seems okay there, but maybe adjusting this will will help us out. So I might just quickly try that and see if it makes any difference, and then we'll come and take a closer look at this little add-on board. All right, so adjusting that made some small difference, but um, definitely didn't really improve anything. So could be this circuit. I mean, I think we have to go a bit further back, possibly even trying the original RF output just to see if that gives us a decent image. But um, maybe I should try that now. Let me try that. All right, so looking at the RF output, it is just as screwy. So um, I think there is some issues here. Um, and this may be a good opportunity to try out my S-Video board on this machine. But before I do all that, um, let's have a look at this. So here we've got our 6847, which is the VDG, which is normally on the main board itself. Uh, and it looks like we've got an EEPROM here and a couple of logic chips. So this must be controlling the... Um, the lowercase character and the different font characters and the logic chips are just um, helping switch between them. Um, but yeah, an interesting little board, I guess. Let's. Um, it looks to be just mounted to the original 6847 socket, so it should just pull off the board. I don't want to break it because it is does seem somewhat unique. There we go. I think the blue wire is going to be going to the um, the video mixer chip, so I don't think it's attached to this board as such. No, it's not. Yeah, that's tapping off the 1372. Very similar to what I'm doing. Um, so I don't think there's really much use in keeping this. I don't think I can learn anything um, useful from this circuit, um, but um, I guess I'll find out later on. If my S-Video mod works, then yeah, this might just go by the wayside. Um, so yeah, there we go. There's some big pin headers that go into the original 6847 socket. Um, I'll have a look around, see if these... Um, might dump this EEPROM and, and see if it's already available online. If not, I'll um I'll put up a link to it, post it somewhere. Um, yeah, but beyond that, I guess there's not that much else to see. So I'll I'll try out the S video mod in this and see if we can actually get a good video output, and that way we can have a look at some of the features of this. Okay, so I tried out my S-Video mod and it also didn't play nice with this board. 
Um, so I pretty much took everything back to stock. So I've removed a little add-on board, I guess you'd call it, and put the VDG chip just straight back into the board. So this is basically stock configuration um, using the RF output. And yeah, it still doesn't look right at all. Uh, it's pretty much lacking in all color, like the, the image shows up green, but you can see from the flashing cursor that um, something's definitely not right. So um, as I didn't really plan this on being a troubleshooting episode, uh, I am gonna split that off into the next episode. Um, I really just was hoping that we could just look at the features and see what's what, but um, we'll be back again um, to troubleshoot what's going on here. So until then, um, as always, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. Um, be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already and that notification bell. Leave me a like, dislike, comment if you've got any suggestions um, and be sure to check out the other channels doing Septandy. Uh, I'll put links to all them down below. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching. See you later. Fucking tracer!